Hey, Mike here with Joe Riggio, and today we're gonna be going over a 1958 Stratocaster that we're doing a body-only refin on. Now, not only are we refinishing this guitar, we're refinishing it in actual 1950s DuPont lacquer. This was a guitar that I bought on trust, totally straight except for some really ill-advised overspray on the original Sunburst lacquer. We want to preserve as much of that original finish as possible, so we've brought back that overspray, revealing as much of the original burst as could be retained. We are already part of the way through this process. Joe had to get the body sanded and primered before we could do the color coat today. Now, that means that we have all of the original parts off of the guitar. Having that patina on the hardware, the agings of the plastic, and the age on the original nitro lacquer on the neck will all inform how much aging we do when we reshoot the body. And that's really a big part of the beauty of this particular guitar, is everything is retained as far as parts go. Hardware, screws, plastics. Everything's untouched other than the finish on the body, so it's pretty, pretty special. Unusual that we have something that's that straight, except yeah. for just one thing. It really is, yeah. yeah. So let's have a look at those. Let's do that. So we're here to look at this 1958 Fender Stratocaster. I have never seen this guitar before. We're Thank in the middle of, of uh, refinishing it to look much more proper and fun. This was refinished by the original owner, overfinished, we'll say, at an early point in its life, and he played it that way for a very long time. All else is original on the guitar. That's one of the really strong points of it. Every last screw is, is original to the guitar. That's killer. You want 100% complete and unmodified neck, frets and everything. Typical 58 logo fading. Yeah, I, I was noticing That's that. That's very typical of 58 to see these decals that kind of start to fade away. In my opinion, it's just a batch. The gold they used just didn't hold yeah. up. They're also very commonly placed where this one is too. Just really close to this, this yeah, far this direction and that direction. So you owned this? I purchased it from the son of the original owner. Okay. Yeah. And then it only has had one owner since. Uh huh. There we Same go. Same with that. One hundred percent. And then everything here is just how we want to see it. Stack pulls. A fifty-seven. Wow. Fifteenth week of fifty-seven. Fifty-seven. Yeah. So that's quite a spread. Mm -hmm. But uh, but early pots. I love that early wiring. I love how clean that is. Yeah. That's just beautiful. That's we gorgeous. still wire a Strat the same way today. Just your typical 58 Strat kit. It's interesting. This feels like it, it's halfway between a soft V and kind of getting back into that, that C shape, but it's still got quite a bit of meat on it. It really does. So very unlike what this neck became in 59, which is usually a very slim C. Very. It's much more like an early 60s profile. And... There it is, 558. The truss rod knot's barely been disturbed. I love the checking on this too. That is just gorgeous. I love that, we, that we're able to pair a body that will still have some original finish on it with a neck that is completely straight. Completely original. I forgot it came with bits and stuff. I mean, hey, e even to have this with only one missing corner, that's a, right. that's a massive win. Yeah. Like some of these just, you look at them and they explode. That's right. That's beautiful. Also complete, arm and everything. I love that what you do finish-wise informs the aging on the hardware and the plastics and the, that where we're gonna go is like, okay, how much patina do we have here? Right. How much yellowing so do I we have I love to have the these parts present so that I can know what the target is as far as the amount of aging. A lot of times I get stuff sent without these things and you know, yeah. I've gotta ask a lot of questions and look at photos. So it's really great to have it all here, make it all cohesive. So you owned this I did. some and years back. I did, and, and I contacted the guy and got the story, and it was his dad's, and the first thing I see him pull out is this black case, I'm like... Not the thing. It's the typical case of, you thought it was a 58, and it's a 78. Right. Right, I mean, exactly. how many times, right? Just, well, no, I remember it was his birthday, and he said it was 58. And Brought the, the case in and opened it up, and sure enough, this gorgeous... 58 Strat was inside the case. So. And had 
dad done the overspray yeah, on the body? Yeah, so that was part of the story was dad was a furniture repairman, refinisher. Got it. Couldn't help himself. Did it to all of his guitars, apparently. He thought the sunburst should go way closer to the middle. Yes, and, he did. <laughs> and almost all the way on the back and whatever. That was his vision, and that's, that's how he wanted it. That's what he did. Well, this is killer. Should we go check out the body? Let's check out the body. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> That's a good image right there. That is a pile of gold. Yeah. It is absolutely unreal to see this much yeah. of anything of this era in one place. This is original DuPont Duco nitrocellulose lacquer from the 1950s. Real stuff, mixed back then, colored back then. It's colored lacquer. And the amazing thing is, is, this is how much they cared about things. They're labeled by a machine of what's in there. Buick, 51, Sharon Green, green metallic chrome with the codes. You can tell just by shaking it yeah. that it seems viable. It's moving. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the old Fender colors came yeah. in this. This is the product that they use. And the colors came from these catalogs. In my feed, a couple months back, popped up five or six of these claiming there's paint inside. I'm like, yeah, in nope. Super Bowl form. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what I expected. So I ordered one just because I had to know that's the one. This is it. This is the one that you... Uh... Yeah. I chose a green metallic. Yeah. I just had to know if it would work. Yeah. So the very first test that I did, I, I wanted to see how it would react. Well, first off, I had to see what it looked like inside. Sure. Especially metallics, even some of the new stuff that we use, the metallics are kind of the first to go as far as shelf life goes. Sometimes they'll separate, the elements will separate beyond a point where you could use it anymore and you have to throw it out. So my expectations were extremely low to even visually have hope that this was usable stuff. But I had to know. I open it up, it stirs up just like brand new lacquer that I would have gotten from my supplier today. You know, read the instructions and what, <laughs> super thick. So, you know, the intended thinning is one to one and a half, which means one of these to one and a half this volume of thinner mm -hmm. to make it sprayable. So I did that right here and like, hmm, yep, looks about right. There it is. So now you're worried about compatibility with the, with the newer lacquers that we use. So the very first test I did I didn't want to baby it at all. I just wanted to see how it would go, just as, as if I used it normally. No experimenting, no, you know, being careful, nothing like that. And sure enough, every, every test was just no problem at all. None. Let me see if it was one of my charts. Was it 55 Cadillac? 55 Cadillac, I thought, Celadon. Looks very much like that this Wedgwood green metallic from the 55 Cadillac chart. Oh, there's another hole. Here's the Celadon green metallic right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that was the, that was the chart you showed me originally. And we've pivoted a little bit from that, right? Yeah, I think it's a little darker than that, closer to this Wedgwood. I love that, that this lacquer wasn't part of the plan. Right. But all I said was, let's shoot a Strat in this green. Right. And then we went through the charts and we found a green and then this happened. <laughs> this happened. I, I can't believe that. Yeah, and yeah, I can't either. I really can't. When, I, when it went on without a hitch, I, I honestly couldn't believe it. I fully expected it to alligator or do something funky. Are you familiar with anybody else in, in, never, in the modern world no, of guitar finishing I've that has never ever heard of this being this? done. In fact, all my you paint friends, you know, have a, an inner circle and we're all just in awe of the fact that it is happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Everything's a, happening. Yeah. No, I've never heard of it, which is why I had to buy all of it. Here we are. The 58 strap body is the first one. It's our canary in the coal mine. Yeah. I see you've masked off the date here. That's where our date is. Yes. Yep. You know, another thing that I, I love about working with you is that like the contours on this are, are perfect. I try to restore those when we can. This one didn't need it. Like we, like we said, it, which is a part of the beauty of this one. This is the only spot that didn't really adhere, but this is gonna be a fairly heavily aged guitar. Right. Yeah, nice. because I didn't bring it down to the bare wood, those remain, because those are in the finish. This will all be part of the big picture when it's all done. And I'll have to utilize all of it, because metallics 
specifically, they, they won't get in the there. way they reflect light, you'll see all these things, and and you know they'll look funny if I don't make sure that it looks like we the have original wear that it is. We have a roadmap. Yeah. So we'll have what's left of the original burst primer peeking, and peeking then the through green. in right. certain mm -hmm. areas. Yeah. Tasteful. Tastefully. Always tasteful. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to see what's next. I'll be scuffing, which will just take a couple minutes. Here's another little neighboring bubble to this one. I'm just gonna get rid of it and we'll, we'll incorporate that to the aging just like the other one. So to start, before I put this primer on, I prepped this pretty heavily with pretty heavy sandpaper for the job, like 220 grit just to really knock down the old finish since we're trying to have new finish bite onto it. So, and then I, I sprayed in kind of a burn-in coat of clear that's thinned way down and it helps to melt that old finish and have it ready for something new to go on top. So unorthodox for sure, but we're trying to preserve that old finish for the effect of a double finish. It'll be a little dusty. It's just a wax and grease remover, just kind of a final clean before you hit it with the new finish and it'll be ready for some 50s green. So this is the same batch that I mixed up for the test originally for this stuff. So there's plenty to do on our 58 strap body right here. This stuff has a very different smell. I mean, it's more potent in general. This has been sitting you know, four or five weeks, so metallics will settle after 60 years, even after a few weeks, but there we go. That's ready to go. But we'll strain it into the metallic gun. No different than any other gun other than keeps the metallic out of the other guns. Metal particles would be in all your other colors. Let's make it green. So it's tack cloth, which is a slightly sticky rag with wax on it. Just takes all the last bits of dust off.
Agreed body. I'm so glad that we were able to save as much of that original finish as was possible. Yeah. I've, I've heard you talk about before, kind of disclaimer about how we don't refinish things that don't need to be refinished. We're already looking at things that are problematic beyond being restored back to their That's original right. state. Right. So by leaving the original sunburst or as much of it as we could there and then revealing a tiny bit of it yep. at the end of the process, we're saving as much originality as can be had with this particular guitar. That's right, guitar. so when I age the guitar, we're gonna you know, strategically put some wear areas and it'll reveal some of that black from the sunburst underneath on the corners. We might get some red or yellow, you know, that starts to get into the middle where, you know, we're all, always trying to make it look real. Realism is, is everything in the age, aging process, so we don't want a real, some big fake wear mark where there wouldn't normally be one just so we can show some of the original red. But in general, we're gonna be revealing some of that original finish with a heavily, fairly heavily aged finish. With that hardware and plastics and that original fretboard yeah. wear makes sense through the gloss that. will all be consistent. Exactly. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, don't have to wait much longer. <laughs> So it's been a few weeks since we've seen Joe and finally here it is, the finished product. He reassembled this for us and set it up to perfection. I could not be more pleased with how this guitar turned out. The aging that Joe applied to the finish, really referencing how the original plastics and hardware had aged, but also you know, we have the original nitro finish on this neck. So the finger wear on the board and the checking, all of that came into play when Joe was doing his aging on this. It's a heavier relic than what we typically see from Joe and that was purposeful. We weren't able to save the original sunburst in its entirety, but we were able to preserve quite a bit of it underneath this finish and Joe chose all the right places to show that off. It's very purposeful and it's very natural to how a 50 Strat would have actually aged. So we've got some forearm wear here and we can see the black of the sunburst and a little bit of red coming through. We've got some buckle wear here. Again, a little bit of the burst and some natural alder here. And then some other little touches that Joe does that are really specific to his aging. It's little things like case rub here, replicating how the case would rub against the finish over time and cause some wear through or strap wear here. You've got this area where you can see how a strap would have rubbed through the lacquer here and right around the rear strap button. It's so, so right in so many ways. And I'm not sure how much it comes through on the camera, but there's really heavy checking across the body as well. And there's a way that kind of dirt gets into checking over time and makes it more pronounced. And Joe's even captured that kind of a detail where you can really see this checking in a way that a, a modern relic doesn't always show. I'm so thrilled with what we were able to accomplish with this and the fact that Joe came into this vintage lacquer was, was such a boon to the success of this project. Getting to choose between different 50s Buick nitro lacquers and settling on this laurel green from a 56 Buick, it slays. I'm just so happy we get to work with Joe and collaborate on projects like this. For more on this 1958 Fender Stratocaster in Laurel Green and everything else we have here at the Guitar Bar, please check out mmguitarbar.com and stay tuned for more content. Mm -hmm.